My name is um, Mark Kaywood, and I'm um, speaking to you from Cape Town in South Africa. It really is a great privilege to um, host this webinar. Um, I will introduce our, um, our speakers in a moment. Um, but before I get there, I would like to just um, give you a little bit of background um, to the uh, special interest groups of the IPMA. And um, so that's the first slide that you can see on your screen. You can see there are many different themes and focus areas for our special interest groups. And I'm sure there's um, uh, many there that would be of interest to you. And if you'd like to be a part of one of those special interest groups, then go to that website in the top right corner, sig.ipma.world and register as a member. There's no cost. Um, I have the privilege of leading the, um, the one in the bottom left-hand corner, the Project Management Office Special Interest Group. Um, we're a group of uh, friends and colleagues that um, all work and are passionate about project management, but more specifically the role and the evolution of the Project Management Office in businesses. And um, so th the focus of, of the webinars and the themes that we discuss all center around project management offices. So please, if you'd like to uh, become a part of that community, uh, again, go onto the website or you're welcome to get in touch with me directly and we'd love to um, hear more from you. Um, before I go on to the next slide, just a couple of um, uh, things to request. The first one is there, there is a, a, a Q&A um, option. And so please, as our presenters go through their slides and, and, and tackle the subject, please raise any questions in the Q&A. We'd love to hear from you and we will take those questions and um, put them to our panelists at the end of the webinar. And then um, we'd love to hear from you in the chat. So there's also a chat functionality. And so please say hello in the chat. Um, let us know where you've uh, logged in from. I'm guessing we have people from all around the world. Um, we already know we have someone from Australia. So please just say hello in the chat and um, yeah, we can um, converse in that, in that way. Um, as I said, I'm, I'm coming in from, from Cape Town. Um, speaking a little bit more about Cape Town, um, I'm really excited to just quickly promote a, uh, the um, 33rd IPMA World Congress that will be taking place in our beautiful city. I am sitting in my office, which is about uh, two kilometers from that stadium you can see in the bottom left-hand corner of the picture um, at the foot of Table Mountain. I'm sorry that Table Mountain is kind of slightly cut off by the slide. Um, but the, the World Congress will be held in that stadium, which was built for the 2020 World, 2010 World Cup. It's a beautiful venue, um, beautifully located, and um, it's a really exciting event. So for more information of that, look at hope.capetown. There's the website at the bottom right-hand corner. It's the end of November this year. Um, if you want to come along, book your tickets. If you're in, involved in research, there's an academic track. We're also looking for speakers, et cetera. So please reach out to us. I think it's a hugely exciting event for us in South Africa and Cape Town is an amazing city to visit. So lots of good reasons to join the 33rd IPMA World Congress in Cape Town. Great, well, now let's get onto the real reason we all here and um, while you, the reason why you have all logged in to this session. Um, I, I had the privilege of, of meeting Martina on Friday and, and learning a little bit more about their research and met Ruth a moment ago as we logged into this call. And it certainly is a topic that is of personally of, of huge interest to me in, in terms of my career and the role that I play. And I'm sure it's of interest to you. They're going to be looking at, um, at aspects of what motivates professionals, particularly young professionals. How can we nurture and support the careers of project professionals? How can we attract young professionals into the career and keep them in the, in the project management career and much more? Um, so let me just introduce our, um, our speakers and then I'll hand over to them to take us through their presentation. So firstly, just to welcome um, Professor Dr. Martina Human. Um, Martina is the Professor for Major Infrastructure Delivery at BSSC, University College London, and a Professor at WUU, Vienna University of Economics and Business. Martina is the Editor-in-Chief of the International Journal of Project Management and Founding Editor-in-Chief of Project Leadership and Society. Martina has over 20 years of experience in research, teaching, and consulting, and um, she loves to contribute to the learning for a better tomorrow. And then to introduce our second speaker, Ruth Lechler. I hope I pronounced your surname correctly, but Ruth is a research associate at Zurich University of Applied Sciences and a doctoral candidate at WU Vienna, 
with the project management group. She researches and lectures on motivation in projects, project management and organizational design. Ruth is a dedicated design thinker and has completed advanced training in design thinking from Stanford University's Global Team-Based Design Innovation with Corporate Partners course. She earned a degree in management organizational studies and cultural theory from the University of St. Gallen, HSG, and she has professional experience as a project manager in strategy consulting, as well as being a, a project lead in transfor transformation and digital digitalization projects in the industrial sector. So it really is a great privilege to welcome both of you to this webinar. Thank you for making time. And I will now hand over to you, Martina and Ruth. Thanks. I'll also stop sharing. Thank you, Mark. Yeah, sure. So while we are setting up uh, our slides, and here they are already, uh, also a, a very warm welcome from my side uh, and from Ruth's side, and uh, we will talk about Proceed, that's a research project, and um, we will talk about the future of project work and actually what motivates you to work as a project manager and what PMOs and organization can actually do to better support you. So. Um, we are not uh, alone, Christine, uh, Ruth Lecherler uh, and me. So Ruth and me, we are not alone in this uh, research team. But you see, it's uh, quite a comprehensive uh, international uh, team here um, that is working on that project. And we are, have already completed one first phase, uh, which was a qualitative phase where we looked into for uh, research, uh, not for projects or project-oriented organizations, and had an, a deep dive on, on young project professionals. And uh, let's go to the next slide, Ruth, please. Um, with this project, uh, with the second phase, we now look very much into the motivation uh, of project professionals, so not only the young ones, because we would also like to contrast the young ones uh, with the more senior ones and see whether there is differences. And we would also like to see what if motivation has an influence uh, on project careers. Yeah, so it's kind of uh, bringing uh, now kind of the, the, the motivation on working on one project to a more comprehensive understanding on how that actually helps you to pursue a project career. And we put that in context um, because projects and also your careers, they're always in a context. Your career is in the context, of course, of you as a person. Yeah, what skills you acquire, also if you get certified, or also what project types you're in, but also what the organization offers to you. And uh, along with these factors uh, of leadership and also professional certifications, we seek to understand how project careers can be supported. And what we have developed uh, is... Uh, based on self-determination theory. And self-determination theory, theory is a very established theory. Yeah, So it's actually uh, sees motivation as a process that begins with the needs. Yeah, So the question is always, what are your needs as a project professional to work and to engage on the project? And uh, why we have chosen this theory is because uh, it's a quite positive theory. Uh, it's kind of uh, understanding that people uh, are eager to learn and would like to grow. And uh, we think that this fits perfectly to project work because projects give a lot of learning possibilities. What we have developed is uh, a model and uh, we have started with young project professionals, but we're now extending it. And uh, as I said, based on the uh, self-determination theory, which uh, actually lays out three main dimensions, which is the need for autonomy, which is considered as the basis. So uh, project professionals would like to work independently, they would like to make decisions and to take uh, a good uh, ownership for their own tasks. So they, they, they kind of um, take responsibility and accountability for the work and uh, 
see and this autonomy is kind of one of the core dimensions and also the underlying dimensions of the other three dimensions, which is competence. And the need for competence is expressed uh, very much in the individual development uh, one takes as a project professional. Um, we started with young project professionals, so they were very much eager to gain project management competence. Uh, I would now comprehensively say that this is about professionalism. So you want to become a professional and developing a project career. So this is the need for competence. Then we have the need for relatedness. Projects are always done in a social context, uh, in the context of a team or teams. And uh, so project professionals, they are eager to build connection, collaborate with others, and they want to be part of a successful team. And what we have actually added in our research so far is the need for purpose. So the self-determination theory, theory does not go for a need for purpose, especially, uh, specifically. But uh, we say, and this is what our findings showed very, very clearly, that especially project professionals want to contribute to meaningful outcomes. So, and this is by achieving the project outcomes, by creating value for the business, but also creating value for society. Yeah, so kind of actually looking uh, a little bit beyond. And uh, our assumption is that this is why project especially fit to young and talented people, but uh, knowing uh, quite a lot of senior project managers, uh, I would say that quite a lot of them, they are also very, very much motivated by the purpose uh, of projects. Um, so let's see um, how this results uh, and how this model relates to you. We have prepared a couple of questions and uh, Wood and I will guide you through these questions. Yes, so um, we prepared um, some um, questions integrated into a Mentimeter. I'm pretty sure you already know Mentimeter and how those poll questions work. You see here a QR code. Um, you can scan it with your phone. And we would like to start um, the whole discussion with you to first of all get to know you and understand um, who you are. So are you um, a PMO manager, um, a team member, um, or uh, maybe a team leader? So we already see some answers coming in. Let's see, it's uh, almost half of the participants have answered already. So it seems that um, the majority uh, of our group uh, in this webinar um, are actually product managers. Um, we have six PMO managers um, so far and some product team members very well. Um, let's have this in mind um, to un maybe understand a little bit and reflect a little bit on um, how we can interpret um, also the following questions. Because what we want to do is to um, reflect on this motivation model and to reflect on those four motivators, um, the competence, the relatedness, the autonomy, and the purpose, and to see um, how we actually can support um, what, what motivates you most um, in working on projects. Wonderful. Um, you can actually um, keep um, Menti open. Um, so the, the, the questionnaire should um, refresh itself um, automatically. First of all, um, what would be most uh, interesting for us is uh, when you look at the um, model, what motivates you most to work on projects? So is it competence, relatedness, autonomy or purpose? It's always super interesting to do this um, kind of um, reflection with all different uh, groups of uh, participants and project managers. Um, here, it seems we have um, 
quite a clear picture. <laughs> That's very interesting. Um, so um, I would say <laughs> the huge, huge majority um, seems um, to most uh, to be motivated mostly by um, their sense of purpose. Uh, so um, it seems that yeah, that uh, aligning your career with your own personal beliefs um, is super important for you. Um, the impact you have on others, on um, the organization and society, like Martina just um, um, presented. Um, I would say that um, also, um, yeah, the, the outcomes, um, the, the bene beneficial outcomes um, for the important stakeholders you have in your projects are super important for you. Um, we also have um, autonomy as, um, a motivator that's important for you. So um, it seems that uh, not only purpose, but also you know um, the um, the being involved in the decision making of the project, um, self management um, versus um, supervision is very important for you. As Martina said, um, if you are able to um, to make your own decisions, to contribute um, to um, the value of the project, to the outcomes um, yourself. Um, this is um, the baseline um, of, uh, of actually um, creating purpose. Um, so this, uh, the, this underlying motivating factor, as Martina um, mentioned, really uh, comes forward now in, with this autonomy and purpose. Um, yeah, and we should not forget that this is always the most important. Yeah, does not mean that the others are not important, but uh, we ask you for a hard decision what is in the foreground and what motivates you most. Yeah, so let's move on. Absolutely. So, what we would now like to discuss with you how we actually can support um the different motivators in uh, your projects so the first question would be how how is relatedness supported in projects so if you remember relatedness is all about um working in teams, collaborating with others, belonging also um, to a, t a team. So we have um, strategy and capability. So I would uh, guess um, that you, the ideas that you could um, yeah, in intensify your um, your relatedness, um, your connection to others by really strongly visualizing um, the strategy you have uh, in your project. Uh, this also um, connects very well with the vision and the mission of the, the whole project. Um, yeah, the collaborative culture um, as well. I would summarize that probably with interpersonal relationships. Um, this has all to do with uh, collaborative um, culture, communication skills, uh, emotional intelligent, intelligence. So the question, um, how can we actually yeah, um, support those in uh, interpersonal relationships and um, team building events? Um, I see in-person meetings, so not only uh, talking uh, with project uh, stakeholders and team members um, online. So um, also to foster collaboration and teamwork, maybe um, establish um, a certain type of catch up meetings um, in person for project updates, use co collaboration tools, um, try to think about how can we really um, increase um, the, um, the, um, yeah, the, the teamwork um, within our team, maybe also when it comes to empathy um, and a certain um, type of leadership style, um, I would maybe also add, um, maybe one could think about setting um, kudos system 
you know, um, thinking about recognizing achievements of others to improve um, the, the, the feeling of connectedness um, um, and also the feeling of a relationship on an eye level um, with your team. Mm -hmm. Amazing. So let's go to the next question. Um, I think what you uh, really see now already is that this motivation dimensions uh, we put forward uh, that they are also very much related uh, to the role of the leader uh, that actually uh, when you know what motivates your project team you can also better act yeah so next question is how is competence supported in projects Yes, uh, I think um, education, um, specific skill training um, is um, certainly a way to support competence, to support learning. Um, maybe one could um, enroll specific skill training uh, for the individual. We have here the idea of knowledge sharing. Um, one could um, um, implement um, a shadowing system, pairing less experienced team members with uh, experienced ones. Um, networking um, is a good idea to learn from others, um, trust, um, empowerment again, um, that we trust um, the people to decide for their own um, learning environment. And here again, we see how competence is actually related to autonomy to relatedness um and we we uh, it's always important to to have a, the whole picture um of how the motivators to work on projects work great i see more ideas coming in um mentorship um supported by mentors shadowing um coaching yeah i think it's all about how to um, how to learn and how to use also the knowledge that's already ar uh, around and how to uh, learn from others. You know? Wonderful. Thank you so much for your ideas. Um, I would suggest that we um, go further and that we um, discuss now um, how purpose could be supported in projects. Uh, we saw that um, most and motivator for you to work on projects. Um, so this would be super interesting to discuss um, what ideas, um, with what ideas you come up with. Vision and collaboration. So um, yeah, to, to actually clarify the project's vision, um, to, com to communicate also the project benefits, uh, maybe um, how the project actually offers create value for others, for the company, for the society. Um, yeah. Sustainable project management, to have a real uh, a clear mission to really share um, what the project um, yeah, creates for others. Um, then we have a vision sharing, company mission. Yeah, I think it's also super important um, to, yeah, to to talk to your stakeholders um, to um, maybe host um, events where you um, where you give the most important uh, stakeholders uh, the possibility to express their needs um, to also share success stories um, to share the vision of the project and to empower um, your stakeholders to actually take part um, of the value creation. Um, yeah, the big picture, the mission, it's all about really, uh, I would say, to clarify um, how can we create value, how can others, the society, the company, really benefit uh, from what we do, how, how can we uh, create value. Yeah. Thank you very much. And then, um, last but not least, uh, we have... Um, the autonomy. How is autonomy supported in projects?
empowerment, um, trust, peer reporting. Um, so um, I would say, especially empowerment and trust, um, it's all about yeah, trusting the individual, allowing them to um, to do their own um, decisions. Um, yeah, give them the freedom the freedom to act, maybe to choose their own tasks, define their own deadlines, of course, within the project uh, time frame. Um, use maybe digital tools uh, tools to facilitate the decision making process um, to give more autonomy. It's all about leadership and culture to really um, enable others to allow them to um, to uh, take on ownership of their um, own um, decisions. Um, communication, I see a lot, um, clear reporting, clear rules. So um, it's all about giving the right framework also to enable um, an autonomous, self-determined um, space. Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much. Um, now we reflected a little bit on um, how those motivators um, might be supported. Um, what we now, in a second step, uh, would like to discuss is um, if we now come back to your different roles, we saw um, a lot of your project managers or PMO um, professionals. Uh, so now um, in a third um, step, let's say like that, um, we would like to discuss, um, especially the PMO, what roles what role plays the PMO in empowering um, project careers by tackling those motivators we just discussed? Let's see. I mean, the, the PMO per se um, is there to give um, certain frameworks um, to help um, to understand the big picture also, um, to help structure um, the project um, approaches. Um, it's all about facilitating, helping, guiding, coaching as well, um, the project managers in their work. Um, then we have um, alignment with um, mission, um, leading. So it's all about um, yeah, helping, also understanding uh, how should I do it and why do I do it? Um, how does this fit um, into the organization strategy, for example? Um, I might add maybe coming back to the training and the guidance, maybe uh, offering a roadmap for career progression. You know, how do I get from being a junior to a senior role? Um, what kind of access do I have um, to training, to project uh, management certifications also? Um, how can I improve uh, my own competence? Um, and probably I'm yeah, hosting certain um, trainings, workshops, um, fostering career development. Um, amazing. Defining a career path. Yeah, I, I think that fits um, very well uh, with this idea with the roadmap. Um, we've seen lots of companies that do not have a clearly defined career path for product management. So I think this whole guidance, how can I develop myself? How can I progress in my uh, career path? Um, the visibility also of that uh, is super important. Wonderful. Uh, Martina, do you have anything to add? Yeah, thank you very much uh, for this uh, exercise. Uh, I think what we wanted to demonstrate uh, to you is also that the the model uh, we were introducing uh, of motivation that it gives uh, actually a very good uh, starting ground for uh, actually uh, leadership and how to lead on projects. Uh, if you're aware 
what motivates. Um, I I was a little surprised uh, that there's so many people who are saying that uh, actually the purpose is for them in the foreground. Um, it depends a little bit what project type uh, you are in. Uh, so our evidence so far has shown that if you are in construction, engineering projects, if you're in projects that kind of have a, a very tangible outcome, yeah, and are also very publicly visible, that the purpose very, very often is uh, rated uh, as the first one. Uh, we also saw that people have uh, very often the uh, that they want to kind of decide for two, yeah, so also relatedness and purpose and we say no go for one so uh relatedness nobody said here that this was the number one uh, but we also had occasions where people absolutely clearly saying i am a senior project manager i'm already more or less at the end of my career i would like just to work with people i want to work with yeah very very clearly yeah so I think this is nice, and of course there's a diversity of what 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 motivates us, and uh, I think it's good to have a, a more holistic understanding. And we ended up now with the PMO, uh, assuming that there will be a couple of PMO managers around, uh, and also uh, wanted to relate it a little bit closer to your work. Uh, but we also have an offer, and uh, Ruth, can you please? Uh, uh, go to the next slide and here it is yeah so with proceed we are currently in the service stage uh, so what we are doing is we need to collect a lot of data and uh, if you're representing a PMO and uh, you're also leading uh, project managers as many PMOs do uh, then uh, this could be something that you have your project professionals uh, fill out the questionnaire and uh, to understand what motivates them, yeah, and also kind of uh, kind of get an understanding what leadership could be or how you can improve leadership in your organization. There will be a customized uh, report. Um, and of course, you can learn from the report, but also you can derive action points by engaging with us uh, on the one hand in the survey, but we will need, of course, a lot uh, of project managers from your organization to say something to make some meaningful uh, evaluations also of it. Uh, so the survey it takes some 25 minutes. And um, for uh, organizations, we also offer an online workshop where you can uh, just uh, collaborate with us and also uh, we help you interpret uh, the findings. Yeah, So if you're interested in this one, please contact us and uh, then you will get a specific survey link for your organization so we can attribute all the project professionals filled out uh, the survey to your organization. And for individuals, we also have an offer. And uh, here uh, the question will rather be, you might be very much interested in uh, how you compare to others and how you can actually promote your career. Um, and uh, we look into the drivers uh, and you can also see how you compare with your peers. Uh, when we have a lot of data, we can look uh, also into the differences between project types um, and uh, also age groups, uh, which I think will be uh, interesting whether there is so much difference or not. And uh, I think there's also the opportunity uh, to trace your career and your career satisfaction if you register for a more panel, uh, because if we have enough data, we also have the option that we will come back two years from now or three years from now and then see what has changed. So uh, by that, you can also kind of compare your uh, career uh, satisfaction and career success, uh, subjective career success. Yeah, and the engagement here is also fill out this online survey and uh, engage with us uh, for individuals. We will hold a virtual conference yeah, to help them uh, also identify and play with their motivational profiles and see how they can discuss with their uh, peers. Yeah, so this is the offer we have to you and we would be very, very happy uh, if you are visiting us uh, at our website and 
also filling out the questionnaire. And uh, we are now here for you for any questions, anything uh, you would like to discuss with us. Thank you. All right, thank you so much, Martina. Thank you, Ruth, um, for the great interactive session and what looks like a fascinating and important um, piece of, of research. Um, so please, if you have any um, questions, you're welcome to pop those in the um, in the Q and A, um, and Martina I, and Ruth, I realize this is kind of a a piece of research that is unfolding. Um, but so I'm, I'm not sure. Let me. But I do have some questions that I'd love to ask you. Um, but maybe the answers will come out in the research. But anyway, um, to, to start with, I mean, I was um, interested in this. I mean, the the model of the four is really is great. I think it really resonates with my experience. You know, the the search for uh, meaning when you're competent, you feel motivated. The the the, the desire for um, good relationships, purpose, and autonomy. Um, I know a current theme that certainly in South Africa and I guess around the world is is the the significant shift to remote working. Um, and um, even in our team, you know, we we work from home um, two days a week. We still come into the office. Um, you know, we work from home three days, come to the office, and that's all about um, at, uh, mostly about that uh, aspect of relatedness, of building connections, collaboration, the fact that um, humans connect over a cup of coffee um, in person, um, and yet sometimes that relatedness need seems to be in tension with um, autonomy, where people want to live their own lives, be fully autonomous, choose whether they want to go into the office or not, not be forced to go into the office. Uh, many people would, I think, if they could choose, would just work remotely all the time. Um, have you? So what has been your experience of possibly that tension between uh, um, autonomy and remote work, which I think sometimes links strongly to autonomy, and yet, um, at times, uh, for me as a manager, almost um, we require people to come in to the office, and a large part of that is about relatedness. So there, there seems to be sometimes a tension there. Um, have you had any experience on that? Uh, well, this is not the, the major focus uh, oh. of this research, but of course, mm -hmm. uh, we have some observations, and I can share these observations. I think what you uh, said 100% correctly is that this need for autonomy um, and the relatedness, there might be contradictions, yeah? So how much autonomy uh, do I want for myself, yeah? Mm -hmm. And the question is, what, what do we talk if we talk about autonomy? So is autonomy home office uh, versus uh, working together in the team? Then the question is, do we have a shared... Um, purpose yeah do we have a shared purpose do we want to do something together yeah then we will know that it is not possible that we're all just sitting at home yeah mm -hmm. uh, but that we need to have some relatedness and the question that you were posing actually is uh you as a as a manager yeah uh how can you actually bring uh those people back to the office and i would say they should uh, see it themselves, what is necessary. Yeah? And of course, I understand there needs to be also some uh, guidance uh, by an organization, especially by large organizations. Yeah, But what motivates uh, people to work together is, and this is also what was shown here very much, is, is the purpose, is actually projects, they create urgency. Yeah, they create urgency. This is why we do temporary projects. And mm -hmm. the urgency helps us to work together as a team with a focus to have a shared outcome. Yeah, And if we are able to even contribute uh, as projects are also the engines of the organization, they are kind of the, the, the agents for change and the, uh, the engine kind of creating and recreating the organization and also creating and recreating a region, a country, yeah. So this, and this is what we see, and this is what we also saw in our first phase of the research that project work is very intrinsic, intrinsic, yeah. So people like their task, yeah. Mm -hmm. And now the question is, is that true for every project? Probably not, yeah. So the question is, 
And this is why we want to put it in relation to the different types of projects. Yeah, because repetitive projects they might also be a little bit more yeah boring yeah than other ones. Sure. What you also saw in our research uh, talking about the type of projects that um, the um, the project oriented organizations we looked into um, have uh, organizations in different um, industries and what we clearly saw that for example when it um, came to um, the typical IT projects um, where you have lots of yeah um, changes, digitalization, new technology coming in, the motivator in the foreground was um, the competent. Uh, so people were really motivated because they could learn so much in their projects. But then we, uh, when we look at, uh, for example, an engineering company where you really have the the projects where you can create something that you really see um that you build something and you can see it and touch it with your own eyes um the creation and the purpose came into the foreground um and um so we always have to um that's why the context is important we also have to we always have to consider the context um of the project, of the individual, of the whole organization, um, to say some something about um, the, the motivation factors that might be uh, most important, um, also when it uh, comes then to the development of a career. Great, thanks very much. It, it does, and um, you know, that does link to my experience. This idea that well, that actually people want to come together. Um, because they know that it ultimately helps them achieve the purpose. And so actually getting in a room regularly improves um, the way we work. And then if the purpose is there and people are motivated, they do that willingly, even if it's, um, yeah, even if it needs to be led, there is a willingness and a buy-in that comes. It's not just forced. I have a couple of questions. Um, the first, and also thanks, people are popping in the IMs uh, where they're from. So we've got people, someone from Austria, Serbia, Ecuador, Zurich, um, Colombia. So very nice to, to uh, and thanks for the, the greetings and the, and the, I apologize. It doesn't seem like the chat is, is working. So just, you're welcome to just um, put it in the Q and A. Um, from uh, Svetlana Buko um, notes, um, Dr. Human, in your proceed model, you've shared several pillars. Do you consider hybrid impact and AI use as drivers for some of the core elements of the model? Well, as we said before, yeah, uh, it 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 will depend how you will be working together. Yeah, so they are not kind of the core elements here, but of course they uh, they will be considered as as context, or they are considered as context. And I mean, uh, it's very clear, and this is also your question mark you had before that uh, we all landed in home office yeah, due to COVID. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And uh, this was kind of having a major impact on how we are working together and how we're doing projects today. Yeah, So if you would have asked me uh, several years ago uh, yeah, if, 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 if it's possible to work uh, virtually in such an amount uh, together yeah, on projects, I might have probably said, I don't know, I, I guess not, yeah, but we're doing it now, yeah. And I think AI is also, uh, yeah, just cha a change, uh, change maker, yeah, changing the way we will learn, changing the way uh, we consider uh, competences, yeah. So I think this is, uh, this is something we cannot uh, estimate now yet, yeah, because it's not there yet, it's not fully there yet, yeah. But uh, in May, we will have, for instance, a conference in Vienna on AI and uh, education in project management and learning. In It's also an online conference for everybody who is interested in AI. And I do think that it will change a lot of, of, of the ways uh, we are going to work together. Yeah. Thanks, Martina. And then um, another uh, question um, from David uh, Monticell. Uh, regarding the Proceed Research Project, are there any results or publications you can recommend for reading, in particular regarding the competence dimension? Yeah, Ruth, do you want to share? 
Yes, so um, actually um, this work um, has been published by us. Um, we um, published several things. So first of all, we have um, a research paper discussing um, not only the competence pillar, but discussing all the pillars and discussing how the organizational context uh, influences um, the motivators. Um, it's published in Project Management Journal. Um, we also um, published several um, more practitioner friendly uh, um, reports um, on this uh, topic. So if you just um, look, basically, if you just look for our names, <laughs> then you will find um, um, the, the practitioner reports and also the academic um, paper. Yeah, you can also drop us an email. Great, thanks. Um, I see uh, Nuno, welcome from Portugal. Um, notes that AI can't manage all, but AGI, artificial general intelligence, will. Um, well, let's wait and see. Um, and that's a lot of massive talking points uh, all around the world, and it's possibly quite scary. Um, just a, another uh, question from my side. Um, I was just reflecting on these four drivers, and um, normally when when companies pull together a project team, the focus is or in my experience, almost exclusively on competence. So you you look at what needs to be done, and you and you look across your resources, and you say who has the best competence, relevant experience, and education related to the project, and you pull together a team. Um, have you? And I, I haven't heard of this before. It just came to mind. I mean, when you're looking at, ha, have you come across people? Um, actively considering project team composition, so the temporary organization that's created, but considering factors such as relatedness, so existing quality of relationships as being a factor or um, purpose. Does this particular project align specifically with a person's sense of what is meaningful for them? Or does the project um, give a, a autonomy? So have you ever seen the, uh, in my experience, it's always competence-based, like who's the most competent person or what's the most competent team? And when you when you design, pull your team together, have you ever seen these other factors being used um, in that way in team composition? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I can give two examples. Um, the one is quite an old model uh, where you actually talk about uh, the team capabilities yeah and they are not only competence but they are also social yeah being socially able to be in a team which is very important mm -hmm. and the third one is decision yeah so that's a quite an old model that is uh, widely used uh, a very practical um, um, answer to uh, to your question is uh, I'm aware of uh, quite a a number of Dutch uh, companies in the transportation sector, uh, when they uh, actually uh, also matching the clients or the suppliers with them, so they are investor organization, that they ask for uh, profiles of the people working. And this is not competence profiles only, but this is also about what, what type of people they are. Do they fit together? Are they socially compatible? Yeah. So I see that. What I have not seen yet, and that might be a, a possibility, is also uh, to look into the purpose, how far you actually, your personal value system, yeah, mm -hmm. is actually matching to that particular project. Yeah, I've not seen that, uh, but for, uh, especially for the social capital, whether they, or the, for the relatedness in this model, uh, if they can work together, uh, I have seen quite a lot of, uh, of examples in, in practice. Mm. Also, what um, I have been discussing a lot with uh, workshop participants, um, the organizations um, we have been working with in setting up this um, model, um, we um, discussed a lot or we encouraged um, the, the companies, the organizations to actually use our motivation model um, to uh, when the project team um, has been set up in the beginning, uh, when the project, when you design your your whole project, to actually, um, yeah, take this model um, in a discussion with your um, team 
and and think basically do the same kind of reflect, reflections we just did in this uh, webinar mm. really think about okay what is important for us as a team um what um, what motivates us how can we facilitate that and then um yeah basically uh, take this as a starting point uh, for the whole for the project itself yeah so no, would, sorry would share as an example when the team is already compiled and how to use it then and uh, because uh, this is for us also the starting point for a, a leadership model we are developing on four projects. Super interesting. So thanks. I, I mean, I know we've done that in our broader PMO. We've done all the personality profiling, but um, I've never we've never used it to actually help um, facilitate the composition of, of project teams. Um, so that that's quite an interesting um, angle to to consider. Um, I, um, Martina, you actually commented, you almost answered one of my questions. This um, were, I, I mean, I guess I was surprised by um, by the level of the number of people that chose purpose um, as their primary driver. I was one of them. Um, I looked through this lot and I thought, you know, these are all important for me. I'm a very, uh, like relatedness is really important to me as a person and autonomy is so important. And, and then I thought, well, if I have to choose one, I know that if if what I'm doing doesn't align to my purpose, eventually I'm going to leave because uh, you know that's probably the it's like very very core. The others are really 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 important, but if I had to be forced to one, I I chose purpose. And um, I guess you already answered, but was that a surprise at how dominant that choice was from our audience? And um, yeah, maybe just some reflections on that. Um, you did mention some of that already, but anything else in terms of what you've seen as, as trends, as, as primary drivers in the project management space? Well, one, one pattern uh, we have seen so far is that young project professionals, uh, they very often position themselves for competence. Uh, so the learning is very, very much uh, in mm. the foreground. Yeah. So we have done uh, this exercise and when we are in the seminar room, we do it differently. So we kind of uh, create spaces on the floor and then you need to position yourself yeah, into that space, yeah, which is even more powerful yeah, because you really need to take a stand. Yeah? Yeah. And, uh, and then it's quite interesting uh, to observe also the people, how they are hopping around, yeah, kind yeah. of trying to find what stand is better for them. As you were describing, Mark, that you think all, all the ones are in, uh, important to you, but purpose is the most important. Yeah. And this is actually what we want to get out here. So what is really the most important? Mm. I was really surprised that there were so many on purpose. And I mean, I don't know, but maybe people can share what the project type yeah, they have. We could see a little bit of a pattern if the project type is very tangible, as uh, Ruth was also saying before, like if you are engineering, construction, if there's something very tangible, the purpose is quite often in the foreground. Yeah, yeah. So that's, that's statistically not uh, kind of uh, proven yet, Yeah, but that's our observations. That's interesting. The first thing I did when I um, was on my mentee is I, I tried to see how many could I pick. <laughs> and then I realized, oh, I can only choose one. And then I was like, oh, okay. Then if I have to go for one, I, I wanted to pick, well, I probably would have just picked all four. So it's quite powerful to force, well, to actually force someone to make that single choice. You don't even give us two. Um, so yeah, that, that was that, the idea, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can see. Thanks. Any reflections from you, Ruth, on that, on that question? Or, well, um, I think uh, it always comes back to, um, uh, let's say, in th three um, dimensions of context. And this is also mm. what we are focusing now on uh, our online survey. It all comes back to the project type, as we already discussed. Um, is it, do you have tangible outcomes? Is it more about learning, maybe organization development? Um, or do you create um, something in your project? But it also has to do, in my uh, opinion, with your individual context. So uh, what kind of personal um, attitudes um, do you have? Uh, what uh, what characteristics, um, what kind of person uh, um, 
are you um, in the working context and mm. also um, the organizational context, you know, what kind of organization are you working in? Um, how how um, does the organization support uh, your projects? How is the culture? Um, how mature is project management? This all has some kind of influence on um, what motivator um, is comes in the foreground um, for you. And what we also saw in, in discussions, this is not um, um, a done picture. So um, those motivators could also change and shift, you know, um, what is most important for me now, maybe in the next project or in another organization or in another um, context I, I find myself in, I would maybe choose um, something else. So it always depends on your context. Mm. Thanks. That makes sense. So it, it, it is, and I even I understand even the, the the context there of where you are in your career. So you know, early on, you, the the drive towards competence would be maybe top. You start getting a little bit um, older, like me. You, you're looking for purpose. Are you going to leave a legacy that's meaningful? Um, we have uh, maybe this can be our last question. We've got a couple more minutes left. Um, Michael, really nice to see you on the call. Um, Michael asks. Um, do you differentiate between employed and freelance staff in your research? So uh, full-time people in, in company in full-time positions versus um, versus a freelance type of role. Is that is that a distinction that you you've looked into or you will look into? In the survey, we have uh, a lot of uh, or we collect a lot of data uh, about. Uh, um also what whether they are full time on the project or part time on the project yeah so we have really gone very carefully in into the into this context um i i think we also have covered that but uh, i cannot say anything about it yet because the survey is not completed yeah okay good well thank you um ruth Thank you, Martina, for a, a really interesting conversation and, and what looks like um, fascinating research. I know I'm certainly keen to um, uh, take on the individual um, assessment, so you're welcome to send that, and I will engage with our broader organization because I think it would be great to get that view, but it's in an organization of our size. There's quite a few checks you've got to go through. You can't just distribute a survey, but um, we will certainly look to take that forward. Thanks again for your time. Thanks for the, um, yeah, for the really, like I said, really interesting conversation. Thanks to all everyone that joined the call. Um, thanks for your questions and engagement. 